Stephen Monk, any chance the NFL goes to a neutral warm weather site for the conference championships? That way they could go to the President's Day Super Bowl and lessen the chances of a mid-February ice bowl situation. I, I don't see the NFL ever doing it. I've never heard any credible discussion about neutral site conference championships. It's part of the home field advantage that you play all season for. It's part of what the team that earns home field for the conference championship game has worked for. And it gives that team an, an, an advantage. Now, does it put you the best team in the Super Bowl? Maybe not. But the team that has earned the right to host that game has earned the advantage that comes from hosting that game. So I don't see that happening. Uh, CJ Newman, interesting question. What NFL player or person have you spoken with that made you think, wow, the voice does not match the physical appearance. For me, it's Calais Campbell. A lot of other people didn't expect Patrick Mahomes to sound like Kermit the Frog either. I'd have to think about that. There isn't one that's jumping out at me. Maybe there's one that I've forgotten about where when you hear the voice, it's shocking and it's not what you expected. I don't know. I'd have to think that through. There isn't one that's just, I've been carrying around in my back pocket. Yeah, I can't believe this guy talks like that. But uh I'm sure there's been somebody over the years where I've said, wow, that's a surprise that, that that's the voice that's coming out of that human being. All right. Um, Daniel Kunamoto, if Lamar Jackson signs an attractive contract extension without an agent, will there be more players lined up to start doing what he's doing? I don't think so. I think that most players understand innately that the 100% that they get on their own is less than the 98, 97, 99% that they get if they have an agent. And there's so many other things an agent will do to help a player guide his way through his NFL career. Uh, Richard Sherman and Russell Okung really tried to start the trend a few years ago, and they were very, they were very vocal about it. It's one thing to say, this is what's right for me. It's another thing to say, this is what's right for me, and it's also what's right for you. And that's what Sherman and Okun tried to get started. I think plenty of guys understand it's better for them to have help. And what's going to happen is the relationships between players and agents will now be created and nurtured at the college level through the name, image, and likeness deals. And that is, is what will, in many situations, just become the natural precursor to the NFL contract. So by the time the player is heading to the NFL, he already would, would have been working with an agent and it's going to be a lot easier for him at that point to say, I'm just going to keep doing what I've been doing. Jason Jones with the NHL expansion draft tonight for the Seattle Kraken, which two cities will get an NFL team next and what will expansion draft protection list look like? I have no idea how the NFL would handle an expansion draft. It's different every time. The priority that the new teams get in the pecking order for the draft of incoming college players is different all the time. But, you know, I've always said the teams that have had successful franchises in the past are teams are cities that we should look for St. Louis and San Diego, the St. Louis lawsuit, probably will sour the NFL on putting a team back there. However, we have to consider the possibility that a settlement of the St. Louis lawsuit could result in some sort of a wink nod commitment that if and when the NFL expands, St. Louis will get a team. I, I think we have to at least ponder that possibility because remember when the Browns announced their intent to leave Cleveland for Baltimore, and there was some saber-rattling about litigation. The end result was Cleveland gets a team, a new team, an expansion team that will be the Browns. That wasn't what Art Modell wanted to do. He wanted to take the Browns to Baltimore and make them the Baltimore Browns, and Cleveland would have been left high and dry. Cleveland ended up getting the commitment that by 1999, the Browns would be back with an expansion team. So I don't know that that works in St. Louis because Stan Kroenke – is on the hook financially for whatever the fallout is of this litigation. But I'm sure that Kroenke, instead of writing a huge check to make the case go away, would love to go to the NFL and say, why don't we just promise these people a team and, uh, and then it won't cost me quite as much to make this lawsuit go away. Uh, let's see what else we have here. A question from I Dunno 40. When was the last time you watched an old Chris Farley SNL skit? That question's asked because I used a Chris Farley gif from when he's uh, the motivational speaker. It's go time. I can't remember when I last watched one. I think the last one I watched was the, 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 uh, 
lay off me, I'm starving, which always makes me laugh. But everything that he did was hilarious. I know the last Chris Farley thing that I actually watched was his entrance for a David Letterman interview. If you haven't seen that, go to YouTube and get it. It's magical, it's memorable, and it will make you start sweating. The amount of activity that you see from Chris Farley in that minute or two before he makes it from the back door to the theater up to the stage. I think he takes somebody out and throws him into a dumpster along the way, but there's a cartwheel involved, or at least something that looks like a cartwheel, but uh, that's fun to watch. Uh, let's see what else here. We should probably, we should probably cut this off soon. Question from yesterday at Milmost with Cam Akers Achilles injury. The Rams are in the market for a running back to help fill the void, which free agent running back is the best fit for their system. And don't say Todd Gurley because he's even more washed up now than he was when the Rams let him go two years ago. You know, the Rams after Gurley and after that knee injury dating back to college, after that knee started to affect him, remember it was late in the 2018 season, a year after he was the NFL's Offensive Player of the Year. The Rams, once they moved on from Gurley, pivoted to the 49ers model of having three running backs who could come in and, and do the job. Cam Akers developed throughout the course of last season as the best of the bunch. Now, look, I, th th their plan is to go next man up. Now, I think they'll backfill with a young player, but they're going to hope the guys on the roster can can do what they've already been practicing to do in that new offense with Matthew Stafford there as quarterback. I, I, I think that at some point, you know, you could see a trade. You could see the signing of an Adrian Peterson or a Frank Gore. I, there's no way Todd Gurley will be back with the Rams. I don't think he'll want to go back. And I don't think Sean McVay is going to want him back, but it's a huge issue. Whatever the Rams do, it's not going to be as good as it would have been with a healthy Cam Akers. Cause I think he was on, track to have a huge season he would have been one of my breakout players for 2021 and now that's a, that's a huge impact for a team that is in such a good division that is a huge impact on their ability to win the nfc west and position themselves to get farther than they did last year with jared goff at quarterback this year with matthew stafford they're going to need somebody at running back to balance things out and make the rams as good as they can be all right that's as good as we can do for today we'll be back tomorrow with another hiatus edition of pft live and pft pm sources close to me tell me that at some point possibly sims will be joining me for one of these which good news bad news i don't know the only way to find out is to tune in if and when it happens but every day Every weekday, even with the Olympics starting, we'll have some fresh video content for you. Training camps opening, exciting time for the NFL. Stay with us every step of the way at profootballtalk.com, and we'll see you back here again tomorrow. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.